I know you want to leave me for Schwab, but before you do that, you should meet our newest team member, Techie. I'm Techie. I can do it all. Go ahead, ask it a question. Techie, can you offer low costs and award-winning wealth management with a satisfaction guarantee, like Schwab? Sorry, Techie can't do that. Now, chances are you've seen this commercial and maybe even got it in the chuckle out of it. The fact is, the average American sees hundreds of commercials for financial planning services. They're on television, online, and so on each and every year. But the question becomes, which ones are actually helpful or even credible? And what is it they're really trying to sell? It's that time again, time to tune out the hype and focus on the facts. Facts that matter to you, the income generation. Let's get started. Get ready to separate reality from myth. With us, David Scranton. David Scranton. David Scranton. No. David Scranton. But David Scranton says, hey, not so fast. How does it affect the market? How does it affect the economy? Thanks to efficiencies in new technology and a staff of veteran analysts and portfolio managers, Sound Income Strategy strives to set new standards and bring institutional style investing to your portfolio. You know, as baby boomers, most of us have kind of sort of a love-hate relationship with television commercials. Unlike today's generation, when we were young, we simply couldn't fast forward the commercials when they interrupted our favorite shows. It was either go make a snack or sit there and watch. Luckily for us, sometimes the commercials were actually pretty good. In many cases, they were entertaining and really motivated us to want to get that new toy or to try that new cereal. Today, of course, we're at an age when advertisers aren't targeting us with commercials for toys and cereals. Instead, we're being bombarded with commercials for prescription drugs and, of course, retirement planning. From independent advisors to huge Wall Street firms, everyone wants to get your attention and, naturally, your business. But aren't these commercials really helpful to consumers trying to figure out how the best way is to manage their money for retirement? We'll talk about that today and much more as we sort through a wide variety of commercials. Joining me will be media watchdog Dan Gaynor. He's the Vice President of Business and Culture at the Media Research Center. Along with our good friend Eddie Gabor, co-owner of Keys Advisors Group in Delaware. Eddie's also the author of the new book, The Common Sense Bull. Let's start by talking a bit about the history of financial advertising on television and some commercial classics. You'll never regret the purchase of a good stock. You don't say. Yeah, my broker says it's a real good buy. What does your broker say? Well, my broker's E.F. Hutton. And Hutton says... When E.F. Hutton talks, people listen. Now, chances are you, like me, remember that one. The commercial first aired during the 1970s. E.F. Hutton, of course, was founded in 1904, and it grew to be the second largest brokerage firm in the United States at one particular point in time, thanks in part to a hugely successful series of television commercials through the 70s and 80s, with the tagline, when E.F. Hutton talks, people listen. Now, E.F. Hutton eventually became part of Smith Barney, but an attempt to resurrect the original company failed in 2013. Still, the success of their television campaign demonstrated how effective TV advertising can be for these big brokerage firms, and also prompted many others to launch their own TV campaigns, including Smith Barney, which had its own kind of sort of catchy tagline. John Houseman for the investment firm of Smith Barney. Good investments don't walk up bite you on the bottom and say, we're here. Finding them takes good old-fashioned hard work, research, the kind they do at Smith Barney. Smith Barney is among a handful of top investment firms singled out for their work in research. Smith Barney. They make money the old-fashioned way. They earn it. They earn it. Another classic. However, sometimes a great tagline or catchphrase can become problematic, as the firm Payne Weber discovered. Remember this one. By the time you met my partner, my financial side. All successful people and companies have a financial side. Let's go, partner. But to really be a winning team, you might need some help. We need some help. 
You need Payne Weber behind you for financial expertise, sound advice. We believe the quality of life just might depend on the quality of your financial services. Thank you, Payne Weber. You're welcome. You're awfully stiff. You've got to loosen up a little bit. That commercial, of course, featuring tennis star Jimmy Connors, was part of the Thank You Payne Weber campaign, which ran from 1975 until 1987. And that, of course, was the year the stock market experienced a historic crash, with the Dow dropping 22% on Black Monday, October 22nd, 1987. Odds are the company realized that Thank You Payne Weber sounded more sarcastic than sincere after the market crash, and therefore they discontinued the campaign on that basis. Which actually brings up another important point. As we discuss and look at some of these old commercials, please keep in mind a point that I often make on this show about one of the biggest challenges facing today's generation of those of us over the age of 50, members of the income generation. It's the fact that many Americans our age became addicted to the stock market and stock market investing in the 1980s and 90s, during our earlier years in the workforce. Now, despite brief and sometimes major downturns like the crash of 1987, overall the 80s and 90s represented the best long-term secular bull market in our nation's history. Buy and hold investing worked for the most part over that two decade period and we were inundated with advertising designed to make it look as if the stock market were actually the only game in town. Now, despite what we thought, that wasn't true then and it certainly isn't true today even with the fact that many modern ads and commercials continue to try to push that message. Here's another memorable example from 1990. Dean Witter believed in listening. Listen, not only to what our clients say, but what they mean. Each client has a level of comfort. Endeavor to find it. We measure success one investor at a time. Another memorable catchphrase and another memorable commercial from 1990 geared toward Wall Street. By the mid-1990s, the message on TV was still all about the stock market, but firms and advertisers were starting to recognize that the internet was beginning to have an impact on how some Americans actually approached investing. So you might remember this one. Surprisingly, many online brokers use very little online technology. They simply send your order to Wall Street, where it's processed the old way. Daytech Online, however, has created powerful technology that lays waste to the old guard. <coughs> Is your online broker even trading online? Daytech Online, built to trade. Launched in 1996, Daytech Online competed with the likes of E-Trade in appealing to the growing ranks of online day traders. The company was acquired in 2002 by Ameritrade, which had its own memorable campaign in the late 1990s. Stuart, can I see you in my office, please? That kid is sick. That hinge is squeaky. Very sick. Stuart, get in here. Sure thing, Mr. Pink. Stuart, I just opened my Ameritrade account. Let's light this candle. Let's go to Ameritrade.com. It's easier than falling in love. What do you feel like buying today, Mr. P? Kmart. So research it. All this stuff is provided for you free of charge. No cost. Yeah, that's synonymous with free. Looks like a good stock. Let's buy. Let's buy 100 shares. All right, click it in there. Okay. How about 500? 100, Stuart. You feel the excitement? You're about to buy a stock okay. online. Okay. Oh! Fabulous. I'm thrilled. What did that cost me? $8, my hey, man. Mike Broker charges me $200 to for this. Ride trade. the wave of the future, my man. <laughs> Now, while Ameritrade Stewart became something of a cult figure, the ad campaign that featured him ended by 2000, which of course marked the start of the first major sustained stock market correction of what I believe is our current long-term secular bear market cycle. So how has financial television advertising changed since that correction and even bigger market drop from 2007 to 2009? Or has it changed at all? Let's ask our first guest and good friend, Dan Gaynor, the Vice President of Business and Culture for the Media Research Center. Dan's been with the MRC for more than a decade. He's a veteran editor and makes several appearances on networks like Fox News, Fox Business, CNBC, and Newsmax Television. Dan, thanks for coming back and being on our show again. Oh, it's a pleasure. This is fun stuff to talk about. So I'm making the case today that the media it has lots and lots of biases. Now, I know you're, you're with us today, 
to tell our viewers that the media is essentially completely unbiased. Isn't that correct? Uh, uh, it should be, uh, or at least largely. I mean, I think it's impossible to erase all biases. But if you look at the media where it is today, uh, the result of more than a decade of social media, uh, journalists have completely thrown out the, the concept of neutrality, something that they're the ones who basically pushed on us in the decades previous. So you, you think this bias has actually gotten worse than in recent years, it sounds like. Yeah, I mean, the origin of journalism, we used to have cities would have five, six, seven, maybe eight daily papers. A lot of them all had an opinion, but nobody was going around trying to pretend that they were neutral. Then we hit the post, sort of post-war era, Edward R. Murrow and you know, Walter Cronkite and people. And the idea was journalism was supposed to be new. Now we know it wasn't, but they, they claimed it wasn't, so they sort of aspired to it. And they've thrown that all in the trash. Hmm. So what do you think has caused this, in your opinion? Is it just greed? I mean, what, what is it? I mean, I think the, the number one cause is uh, journalists have always been liberal. And when they didn't get a chance to expose that, when they cut down what they were doing in a given day, broadcast journalists might appear, you know, a minute, minute and a half in a segment. You're not say, getting a chance to say much. A print reporter might write an 800,000 word story, interview a bunch of people. There's not that many choices but now, because of social media, a typical journalist might tweet 20 or 30 times in a day. That's a lot of content. They might appear on TV or radio. There, there's so many more opportunities for them to express their opinion. And they discovered the wrong thing, that the more they express their opinion, the more express their biases, the more likes and clicks and retweets they got on social media, the more popular they became within one niche and unpopular the other, and it was a self-reinforcing reality. Interesting. Yeah, well, the Internet has changed virtually everything you and I do. Uh, stay with us, if you will, Dan. We need to take a commercial break. We'll be right back in a moment here on The Income Generation. I'm David Scranton, and we'll be right back. David J. Scranton, Amazon bestselling author, money manager, and national TV host, is on a mission to educate baby boomers about the need to shift from growth to income. If you're at or near retirement, focusing on income over growth can make all the difference in the quality of your retirement. Each week, David educates America on his Newsmax TV show, The Income Generation, where he provides special reports and more to teach baby boomers about the income model. Call now for a free copy of David's latest book. Go to soundincomestrategies.com income to find out more. For behind the scenes photos, retirement planning tips, and upcoming giveaways, follow The Income Generation Show on Facebook. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch video clips, guest interviews, and to catch up on past episodes. investment fund in which the management hopes to make your money grow and takes what it considers sensible risks in that direction. Ask your securities dealer for a free prospectus. If you remember that one, well, let's just say you were among the first of the baby boomer generation. The Dreyfus Lion made its debut in 1957, and Dreyfus was the first mutual fund company to launch a retail advertising campaign. America's addiction to Wall Street is no accident. From the very earliest days of financial advertising on TV, big Wall Street firms have obviously had the most money to spend and to get out their message. That message, by and large, has always been that the stock market is the only game in town when it comes to creating a successful financial strategy for retirement. However, starting in 2000, and especially since the financial crisis, that message has been met with increasing skepticism by more and more everyday investors. 
Now, of course, this is certainly understandable. Investors relying mainly on stocks and mutual funds have seen their portfolios devastated twice since the turn of the century. Now, with stock market volatility on the rise again since 2018, fears are mounting that a third major sustained market drop since the turn of the century could be just around the corner. So how have the big Wall Street firms modified their message in the wake of this, if at all? We know the value of trust. We were built on it. Back when the country went west for gold, we were the ones who carried it back east. By steam, by horse, by iron horse. Over the years, we built on that trust. We always found the way. Until we lost it. But that isn't where the story ends. Right. It's where it starts again. With a complete recommitment to you. Well, you know a major change has taken place when your advertising campaign is all about trying to win back trust. Merrill Lynch, in fact, took a similar approach following that 1987 stock market crash that we discussed earlier. The 1987 stock market decline underscored many problems. The performance of the market and the dollar show a lack of confidence. As a nation, we must stop living beyond our means. The markets are discriminating, sorting out strong sectors from the weak, activating the process for change. As we look to preserve capital in uncertain times, we should not overlook opportunity. At Merrill Lynch, we're here to help. However, those types of commercials are the exception, not the norm. Most big Wall Street firms have simply chosen to ignore the financial crisis and how it may have impacted investor perceptions of Wall Street. Of course, it isn't just the big Wall Street-based firms that advertise on television anymore. In fact, with the expansion of cable and satellite TV and the rise of the internet, independent advisors and those that specialize in alternative financial strategies have more opportunity than ever before to get their own commercials out there. And they're taking full advantage of that opportunity, especially knowing that baby boomers, having been burned twice so far by the stock market in their prime years of investing, are actively looking for better ways to protect and to grow their hard-earned money. Now it's time to bring back our good friend, Dan Gaynor, Vice President of Business and Culture for the Media Research Center. Dan, thanks for sticking around. Oh, it's a pleasure. I, I love doing this. I know you do. It's one of your favorite topics. That's why we love having you for it. So it's interesting. I hadn't thought about that. You're right. The, the, the written word gives, gives reporters and the like really more opportunity to express themselves. And then those liberal leanings end up coming out, whether on purpose or accidentally. Whereas you're right, a one and a half minute television clip doesn't really give them much, a, much of a chance except to report the facts. Is that basically what you're saying in part? Yeah, and there have been studies done where reporters, some analysis, the reporters, the people they follow on Twitter are universally much more liberal than the rest of the public. So they don't follow that many conservatives on Twitter. They're hanging out with their friends. That's what they're doing. Okay, so, you know, that's fine for the average reporter and his or her bias. But but we're talking a lot about the big Wall Street firms today and all those, all those advertising dollars going to steer our baby boomers, to steer you and me in one direction or another. Um, and sometimes they'll use different things. For example, uh, we're going to play a clip in just a minute here from Bank of America where they actually use optimism and they use empowerment to help people. Listen to this. In big ways and in small, Bank of America is here to help you get things done. What would you like the power to do? So, Dan, tell me, what do you think? This, this commercial, when, when you're sitting here as a boomer yourself, do you find this commercial to be effective in motivating you as a member of the income generation? Um, I, I would say it motivates me. It makes me, uh, you know, kind of gets me going. Gets, I think it's a very upbeat sound. And for older, older listeners, older viewers, you know, what they're hearing, they're not just hearing the William Tell Overture. They're hearing the Lone Ranger. And... You know, that that's I mean, that makes you, it, you know, heroes and, and good things. And, and, you know, maybe those 
<laughs> think that way. Might be hearing Bugs Bunny or something. But it's a it's a classic tune, and the, the way they do it is sort of a silly, upbeat way. So I think it puts you in a good mood. I'm not sure if it really convinces me to hand over my money anymore. Okay, so let's try this one here from Fidelity, where you know they they it, it's kind of a similar theme. Um, I think this one is geared specifically toward boomers and the scent, the need for control. So listen to what Fidelity has to say. Life isn't a straight line. Things happen. And sometimes you can find yourself heading in a new direction. But at Fidelity, we help you prepare for the unexpected. With retirement planning and advice for what you need today and tomorrow. Because when you're with Fidelity, a partner who makes sure every step is clear, there's nothing to stop you from moving forward. So this is obviously something that's more designed to empower the do-it-yourself investor. Uh, give me your opinion on its effectiveness to a do-it-yourself well, investor. It's much more targeted to people like myself. Uh, if you remember just a few years ago, that was essentially the Brexit message in Britain. Uh, take back control. And so it was geared, of course, toward uh, you know, middle class uh, voters. It was geared toward people on the right who didn't trust the EU. This is for people who may not trust big Wall Street firms. Oh, well, we're not here to basically be the big Wall Street firm. We're here to give you the tools to take control. I think that, I mean, if they were trying to market to me, that that would work. That, that's much more geared toward that. And yes, you are the quintessential boomer. So 30 seconds. Can you tell us how boomers have forced the hand of Wall Street to change the way they advertise? Well, it's the same way every every big boom of generation. Boomers have tons of money. They're all retiring all at once. You know, we're going to see this massive wave of people hitting retirement. And then it's going to need tons of help in, in the retirement space because it's all very complicated to do on your own. Yeah. And, and they tend to be more do-it-yourselfers in the previous generation. So I think they elicit commercials like the Fidelity commercial we just heard. So if you could stay with us for one more segment, we'd love to have you back, play a couple more commercials and get your comments there. We'll be back here in a moment on the Income Generation. I'm Dave Scranton. I'm here with Dan Gaynor. We'll see you in a minute. David J. Scranton, Amazon bestselling author, money manager, and national TV host, is on a mission to educate baby boomers about the need to shift from growth to income. If you're at or near retirement, focusing on income over growth can make all the difference in the quality of your retirement. Each week, David educates America on his Newsmax TV show, The Income Generation, where he provides special reports and more to teach baby boomers about the income model. Call now for a free copy of David's latest book. Go to soundincomestrategies.com slash income to find out more. For behind-the-scenes photos, retirement planning tips, and upcoming giveaways, follow The Income Generation Show on Facebook. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch video clips, guest interviews, and to catch up on past episodes. Money managers might seem the same, but some give their clients cookie cutter portfolios. Fisher Investments tailors portfolios to your goals and needs. Some only call when they have something to sell. Fisher calls regularly, so you stay informed. And while some advisors are happy to earn commissions whether you do well or not, Fisher Investments fees are structured so we do better when you do better. Maybe that's why most of our clients come from other money managers. Fisher Investments, clearly better money management. Chances are you've seen commercials for Fisher Investments and are familiar with their catchphrase, we do better when you do better. Founder Ken Fisher is credited with the ability to convey the concept of financial fiduciary without actually having to say the $10 word. In fact, he recently devoted an entire show to exploring the difference between fiduciary and non-fiduciary advisors. Just a few weeks ago, as a fresher, fiduciary is the highest standard of accountability in the industry. And fiduciary-based advisors, such as those aligned with our company, Sound Income Strategies, and the Retirement Income Store, are required by law to act in the best interest of their clients. 
non-fiduciary advisors are bound by the suitability standard, which is much less stringent. The distinction can be an important factor for everyday investors to consider when seeking an advisor, which is why you'll hear it mentioned directly or indirectly sometimes in TV ads. So here's another. I'm the kind of guy who doesn't like being sold to. The last thing I want is to feel like someone is giving me a sales pitch, especially when it comes to my investments. You want a broker you can trust. A lot of guys at the other firms seem more focused on selling than their clients. That's why I stopped working at my old brokerage and became a financial consultant with Charles Schwab. What kind of financial consultant are you looking for? Talk to us today. While some commercials strive to educate and others try to hook you with a memorable catchphrase, yet others take a different approach, as we've already seen. They may use humor, include clever animation or special effects, or may actually try to appeal to your emotions. Let's look at some more examples from both big firms and independent advisors and talk about them with our next guest. Now it's time to welcome back for one last segment our good friend, Dan Gaynor. So Dan, we have uh, two things I want to play in this particular segment here. Uh, one is a Raymond James ad that uh, you, I'm sure you remember. It'd be interesting to get your feedback on this one. So let's go ahead and listen to that. Kevin, meet your father. Kevin. Hi. Kevin. 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 Trusted advice for life. Kevin, how's your mom? Thank you. Life well planned. Now that one is obviously supposed to tug at your heartstrings. And Dan, I've known you long enough to know that you can be a little bit of a cold fish sometimes. So did it get your heartstrings? Tell us the truth. Oh, I, I think absolutely. I think that tugs at your heartstrings. I think it's a very effective use and and, and very well done. I mean, it's a you know, to to basically done almost one word throughout. The entire ad, but it's the inflection, the different people saying it, the background, and you 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 know what's going on. Entire an entire human life played out in one commercial, and you can't hear that commercial without you know, literally envisioning yourself going through those stages of life. I, I, I you know the the ad company they hired to do that really had their act together. Sure, yeah, sure. They, they, I I would absolutely agree with that in terms of the quality of a commercial. So, you know, I, I guess the question really is, how much do you think that some of this stuff really affects people's decisions? You know, sometimes people uh, just look at it, okay, it's great branding. And some, some things actually motivate people to take action. Which category do you think a lot of these commercials are in that we've been watching? Well, I, mean, I, think, I think they fall on different. I don't think that motivates me to take action. I think what that does is it, plows the ground. It leaves me you know, susceptible to now the first time I'm going to see one of their ads that's not like that, where it might be linked toward, well, you know, you've, this time of, you've gone through your whole life and now you're ready to, you know, you got to worry about your retirement. I think I would be very susceptible to that, where, you know, I think that's the that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to associate positive feelings. It's hard to say, Give me your, let me help you with retirement. Whereas I thought the other one that really said take back control, that hit me more as a, you know, a basically take action now kind of back. Okay, fair enough. I've got one more for you. I want to make sure we don't run out of time in the segment before we play this. Uh, this is from Ameriprise, of course. And you know Ameriprise, they're a huge firm. They try to appeal to the masses. So let's listen to one of their advertisements and uh, I'd like to get your feedback on that. How well does your financial advisor know you? If they saw you on the street, would your advisor recognize you? At Ameriprise, we see you as more than a client. That's why our advisors care about what's important to you. 
They offer personalized advice to help you prepare for what's expected and even what's not, giving you the freedom to live financially confident. Because to us, you're more than just another face in the crowd. With the right financial advisor, life can be brilliant. All right, that's, I mean, nice commercial. Doesn't really strike me in any strong way. You? Well, I mean, I think it self-edits real aggressively at the very beginning. Because if you don't have a financial advisor, you literally have turned off the commercial. And so you know, that puts people in a very narrow band where you're ignoring people. I think if you had some of the humanity of the previous commercial, where, you know, because a lot of people might be doing their stocks on their own, you might be your own financial advisor and they're not speaking to you at all. Then. So I think they, I think uh, that was a little bit too abrupt of an entry. And you know, like I said, you just if you're putting people into, into you know, groups, you've immediately narrowed your group to a very finite one that may sure. not listen to you. Then. Sure. And, Dan, we've got a little bit over a minute left, but I want to ask you <clears throat> how much you think this affects reporters, journalists, if they're, if they're listening to or watching a lot of these advertisements on whatever the medium is for, for which they work, um, does it affect what they think is good or what they recommend uh, in, 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 in other types of media? Of course, they're impacted. You know, we live in an advertising, you know, fueled society. Journalists are constantly on media, watching TV, reading stuff on Twitter, reading in print. So if you've got advertising out there, believe me, they're watching it. And so if it's feel good advertising, and some of this was, they're going to feel good about your company. So to some extent, I think uh, companies need to be aware, and I think some of them are aware, that journalists who cover them also are recipients of their advertising. So that's that's why you'll see Snoopy in ads or you know, or whatever, because they're trying to tug the heartstrings of America and also American journalists. And as you and I talked about on a previous show, we don't have time to get into today, but <clears throat> sometimes the advertisers for a particular medium uh, affect what the journalists end up saying or having to say to play the corporate game. So, Dan, thanks so much for being with us once again. Really appreciate you being here as usual. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. And you stay with us. We'll be right back here with more on the income generation. Our goal when you work with Abacon Financial is for you to feel the pressure and stresses of your life being lifted. Our focus for our commitment to you and your goals allows you the freedom to begin to dream big again. Abacon Financial wants to work with you to help elevate you to reach a new level of financial stability. That was a commercial from Abacon Financial a firm headquartered in Kalamazoo, Michigan. And this ad takes the idea of elevating you to financial stability quite literally, as you just saw. Next, let's bring in a good friend of the income generation and a good friend of yours truly, uh, president, co-owner of Key Advisor Group in Delaware, and the author of the book, Common Sense Bull. Eddie, welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me, Dave. So this is a commercial uh, by more, uh, more of an independent firm, somebody much like yourself. 
Uh, what's your take on the commercial? Do you feel it's informative? Do you feel it would motivate people to want to look into the company? Your thoughts? You know, it's the it's it's more to me. I feel like it's a more of a generic type commercial. You know, it talks about elevating and helping you achieve your goals, but it doesn't really define how they're going to do that. You know, and I understand why they probably want to be not too precise to try to attract people to come in. But I'm a big believer in education, and I think for someone to get value out of some commercial, you want to educate them a little bit as to what makes you different and why they may possibly be a fit for you or your family. So uh, not a huge fan of the commercial because I don't think there's a lot of education behind it. Uh, but again, I understand why from a business perspective, why they probably keep it, kept it more vague than more precise and educational. Now, Eddie, I know you believe in being a specialist um, because you know being a generalist is something that <clears throat> maybe you go to when you're healthy and everything's fine. But when there's a medical issue that's really, really important, you want to go to a specialist. And let's face it, planning for retirement, if you're within 10 years of retirement or are retired, uh, is something that's probably the most finan financially important, significant time of your life. So in that realm, specialty is important. Um, tell us about your specialty, your niche, and how it's different from most generalists. You know, we really try to laser focus on that retirement market that you just talked about, where people are more in the distribution phase of their life versus the accumulation phase. You know, we try to educate folks that there really is two phases to retirement, where the accumulation phase is where you're growing the assets. And then to your point, when you're 10 years away from retirement or closer, you have to start talking about preserving and generating income from the assets you've worked hard to focus on. So we don't shy away from the fact that we're not the strongest on the accumulation side uh, because we decided 20 years ago to really focus on the distribution side of investing uh, using things like individual bonds versus bond funds really focusing on risk management versus trying to capture 100% of the upside of the market. And really just, again, staying really close contact with our clients because as you know, the interest rate market is just as volatile as the stock market. So it's not a set it and forget it type of strategy. So it's my opinion that it's impossible to try to be all things to all people in this complex industry. You really got to laser focus on something that you feel you would enjoy so that way you can try to be the best at what you do. Well, a man after my own heart. That's why you and I are, are, are such close friends. Um, but because our viewers don't really want to want to hear a bromance going on here, I want to play another commercial. Uh, I want to get your take on a commercial from a financial advisor, Matthew Phillips Brown. And uh, tell me what you think after you listen to this. Imagine you needed the service of a 911 call, whether it be the police, the ambulance, or the fire department. But at your time of need, they were closed. Think of the tragedy that could take place. Now let's take that same scenario and apply it to the banks being our financial advisors. Banks don't open late on weekends, and they generally close at 4 p.m. and in some cases 8 on weekdays. You can never get a bank advisor to come visit you, which means if you don't make it before close, tough luck. Well, guess what? I don't close, and I'll come directly to you. I am Matthew Phillips Brown. Okay, well that's obviously a different twist. In the 45 seconds or so we have left, what are your thoughts on this and its effectiveness for our income generation members? So I'll tell you what I like and then I'll tell you what I don't like. Uh, what I don't like is him kind of comparing himself and kind of downgrading his competition. I'm a believer that you shouldn't do that. I just think it's a professional courtesy to really focus on what brings value to your clients versus trying to knock someone else's business model. What I do love about it is him basically sharing his value proposition as he's there for his clients seven days a week. And I think if you focus more on that on the commercial, it's much more impactful and much more powerful versus basically saying he will do it and someone else won't. Because again, I just think it adds a little bit more credibility to himself if he just focuses on him and his values versus trying to maybe minimize someone else. Eddie, we need to leave it there in this block. We'll be back in just a minute after a commercial break. You stay with us too. We'll be back here on The Income Generation. Welcome back to the Income Generation. Now it's time to bring back for one last segment our good friend, Eddie Gabor, co-owner of Key Advisors Group in Delaware and the author of the new book, 
the common sense bull. So, Eddie, I know that when people come to see you for the first time in your office, they, have some, they must have some preconceived notions about different firms, many times notions that they got from watching these advertisements on television. So what are some of the, the things that you hear or maybe some of the hurdles that you face being an independent firm uh, when folks first come in? Maybe misunderstandings that maybe you need to make clear to, to, to an investor. You know, I think one of the misconceptions with independent firms is that they don't have the resources that maybe a household name has. Uh, you know, some of the bigger companies that you'll see running commercials or whatnot. And so we spend a lot of time educating them on the fact that our independence, we feel, brings actually additional value uh, because we don't have any allegiance to any one type of strategy. So we can really have an open architecture type of portfolio model with a tremendous amount of resources behind the scenes. So you may walk in our office and see, oh, there's only five people working in the office and think that we're a small operation. Uh, but the reality is we're small in numbers in regards to the amount of people working at the office, but the resources we have behind the scenes rivals those of the largest firms in the country. Sure. And you know, it's funny because um, if you think about the the that's a big misconception. Everybody thinks, gee, the big firms, the big firms, they have more depth of bench, but they don't realize that there's, there's really a, a dual fiduciary role, especially for publicly traded companies. They've got a fiduciary role to maximize value for their shareholders, but then a fiduciary role to its clients. And I'm not sure if you were that publicly traded company, how you can fulfill both fiduciary roles without creating some conflict of interest. Can you? No, and you know, that's a very, very good point. And again, I think another advantage that indiv independent advisory firms like us have, obviously we're not publicly traded. So uh, when we're building our investment strategies under the fiduciary model, we're doing the best that we possibly can and take keeping our uh, best interests of our clients ahead of our own, as you know, as an investment advisor representative. And I think having a fiduciary is something else that we've done a lot of educating on. Uh, and it's important for people to know who they're they're working with and what type of standards are held to. Good advice, as usual. All right, Eddie, thanks so much for being on the show today. We appreciate you having here, uh, being here. And you stay with us, too. We'll be back here with more on the Income Generation. I'm David Scranton. We'll be back in a moment. For behind-the-scenes photos, retirement planning tips, and upcoming giveaways, follow the Income Generation show on Facebook. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch video clips, guest interviews, and to catch up on past episodes. in a timeout because apparently riding the dog like it's a small horse is frowned upon in this establishment. <laughs> Luckily though, I, you know, I can conceal this bad boy underneath my blanket just so I can get on E-Trade, check my investment portfolio, research stocks, and set conditional orders. Wait, wh why are you taking... Oh, I see. Hey, Max, would it kill you to throw a guy a warning bark? Of course, we wouldn't end this episode without showing the adorable E-Trade baby at least one time. It's a great example of a successful TV commercial campaign because it's clever, funny, and certainly memorable. Much like those commercial catchphrases from many, many years ago. When E.F. Hutton talks, people listen. However, at the end of the day, does anyone really make important decisions about their life savings based upon a catchphrase or on a TV commercial that made them laugh or cry or worry? I certainly hope not. All a TV commercial for financial services can really do is to get your attention and perhaps motivate you to want to learn more about whatever it's saying, or teaching, or selling. As we've seen, what a lot of today's commercials are selling is the same as the very first commercials about investing. The idea that Wall Street is king, and that the stock market is the only game in town. The message may be couched in clever special effects and Hollywood-level production values, or in humor or strong emotion, but it's basically the same message. Here's the good news. Now, fiduciary advisors with different messages and alternative strategies more suited to today's generation of retirees and near-retirees have more opportunities than ever before to get those messages out to you. 
They're competing directly with the big firms and traditional stock and mutual fund-based advisors with their own commercials, commercials designed to educate, to entertain, and to distinguish them from the pack. And in many ways, that distinction is exactly what baby boomers are looking for. They're seeking alternative financial strategies designed to better protect their money from the kinds of devastating stock market downturns that we've experienced twice since the turn of the century. They're seeking personal guidance geared toward meeting today's challenges and ensuring retirement income, and a trustworthy advisor qualified to provide it. And that takes more than a clever catchphrase. Thanks for watching. If you're close to retirement and you really want to know how to protect and maximize your money, it's absolutely essential that you stay informed and up to date. And right here is where you can do it on the income generation. I'm David Scranton, and we'll see you next week.